height back. This is the Aaron's Opinion Podcast on 87.1 Caroline Radio, KCG in Bakersfield, your home for all your variety hits, and of course, Blind Advocate Radio, or if you aren't listening to us on the radio, no problem. We're on basically all of the podcast clients along with YouTube. Welcome back, listener. We're joined by a very, a very kind, a very educational and entertaining person, Mr. Wilbert Williams from Jamaica. He was just telling us before the break about these, this whole problem where blind people, and the problem, as I was saying, the problem is, is still, even in America, blind people have this problem where you can go to college and then you don't get a job. And I think that's a very serious problem. Yes, it is a serious problem. Um, I remember I went into a field where when I decided to go into that particular field, there was no blind Jamaican there before. That is physiotherapy. And I remember reading about it and going up to my um, principal at the time and saying, I think I would like to do this. And they went through the processes and eventually got me enrolled. That is how I got to England. And I was given a scholarship by the Jamaican government to study physiotherapy in, in London. So my, my whole career has been built around obtaining scholarships and bursary to get into where I want to go because my parents could not afford it, you know. And um, fortunately for me, I went to the University of the West Indies at a time when you, it was not very expensive to go to university. It's very costly these days. But when I got to university, um, I could work during the day and study in the evening. So I went on an evening program as a part-time student. And so I did my work. Now, for me, I went, I had a good time in physiotherapy. I ended up participating in the opening up of the first school of physiotherapy in Jamaica, where I functioned as a part-time tutor for a number of years. And, and I also served right. as a right. clinical supervisor. Now, by, by the way, you've said physical therapy a couple of times. Can you tell us, especially our younger blind audience, anyone younger than 28, I actually come to think of it next month, I turn 29. So basically anyone who's younger than 29 might be a little, a little taken aback, a little confused. What, what is physical, what do you mean by physical therapy? I might know, but please explain. Yes, it's, it's treatment of an individual using um, physical mod modalities. For example, we would teach somebody to walk again and would take them through all the routine you know, of using crutches or using a walking frame. Um, we would give them exercises to strengthen the legs. We would give exercises to strengthen the upper body. We would use hydrotherapy in some instances. Um, if they have a chest problem, we would do the suctioning, you know, getting all the fluid off the lungs and using physical means to, to, to help them to recover. 
So it's treatment using various physical modalities, whether it be physical exercises or electrical modalities or hydrotherapy or, or any of those physical means. So that's what it is. And that is why in the States, the profession is called physical therapy. In, in, in Britain and in Europe, it's physiotherapy, but it's one and the same. And, and that is how um, I started out. Now, later, I branched off from that into becoming a manager of an agency, a training agency for people with disabilities. Because up to that point, we didn't have any single agency that would, you know, encompass the needs of not only people who are blind, but people who are physically disabled or deaf or people with um, some level of mental retardation. So that is part of my journey. Now, that was a natural progression because when you work to rehabilitate people, you want to make sure that you can get them into some form of employment. And so that training center was designed out of activities from the International Year for the Disabled. I don't know if you can recall that, but in 1981 was designated the International Year for the Disabled all around I, the world. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able <laughs> no. to recall yes, since I yes. wasn't born yet. Yes, but <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Yes. But um, I had the privilege of coordinating all the activities for that work in Jamaica. I was appointed by the Jamaican cabinet to, to coordinate all the activities. And so one of the recommendations was the, the building of a center, a training center for people with disabilities. So that came into reality in 1994, and I managed it until my retirement in 2004. So that, that was a big experience. Now, another thing we spoke about earlier was uh, work in the Caribbean. Now, let me tell you, one of the big things we have in the Caribbean is trying to get Caribbean agencies to, to coordinate and to work together. They see themselves what as you, separate you, entities. Okay, all right. Caribbean agencies. Now, this is uh, also a l slightly confusing for me. When I was in Lucia, um, I, I recall just from my experience in Lucia that we never talked about what was going on over on, on Kits or Vincent or Jamaica. Oh, or, true that. Or Trinidad Tobago. So I'm I'm a little confused that you say that because although we group the Caribbean together, if you're there and you learn from the local people, you you live with a local community, a local family, which I did, you learn that every nation in the Caribbean is its own nation. And just like any other country, nobody worries about what's going on in, in going on in Trinidad if they're worried about what's going on in Lucia. So what do you what do you mean by what do you mean by working together with these agencies? What do you mean there? That I didn't understand. Well, we we eventually formed a Caribbean Council for the Blind. Ah, indeed you did. Yes. I forgot about that. You are correct. You did. Yeah. Yes, and I was, yeah. I, was their president. I was their president for a number of years. I, you know what? I remember that now because when I was in Lucia, I went to a Lions Club meeting. And the That's Lions, right. And, it, well, Lions Club isn't CCB, but it was basically a meeting of both of those agencies all at once. Lions Club yeah. is a Lions Club meeting, and they yeah. discussed regional issues of the CCB. So actually, I kind of go back and, t and, and delete my point that I made. Actually, in the Caribbean, on sort of these, if you're participating within an international organization, a global one, then they talk about what goes on all over the region. But individu right. individually, the people yes. are just more concerned with their yes. individual life, just like anywhere. Yes. But yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, the Caribbean Council was for the Blind was formed out of an, an initiative 
mm-hmm. by the Royal Commonwealth Society for the Blind, as it was at that time. Later, it changed its name to Sight Savers. Hmm. And Sight Savers sent and paid an individual to come down and set up the Caribbean Council for the Blind back in the late 70s. And so we had a we still have a coordinated approach like in 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 I care. I think the most outstanding area of the Caribbean Council for the Blind in its development has been in eye health. Definitely. And you know, eye health is very important. And we we also felt that in most of the Caribbean region, the names given to the agencies stigmatized the agency. You know, because in Jamaica, we have the Jamaica Society for the Blind. We have the St. Lucia Blind Welfare Association. We have the Trinidad and Tobago Blind Welfare Association. And it is hard to get people who are not blind to use the services in those agencies um, because of the stigma of blindness. Right, but if you're bl- okay, but, maybe, but, but if you if but you, you see, if, if you're you, blind, if you're blind, that's where you would want. Oh I mean, yes. there, there, there's always yes. some. There's always stigma, but I don't yes. care that I don't care that I'm blind. I mean, no, there's always, to, to, there's to a, the blind person, it doesn't matter. Ah, okay, to okay. The so people for, who can see. Oh, all right, all right, Mr. Williams. I see. So you're saying that to the to the local community who is who happens to be sighted, you yes. were saying that it seemed stigmatizing of the blind community that lived there. Yes. I yes. never felt. Okay, got it. Yes. I uh, yeah. understood. I never felt that way. In fact, I felt a great a great level of admiration and respect for oh, people that, in the Caribbean, it, and I never felt. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, one one person. Okay, I mean, just like in any country, every once in a while you run into someone who's grouchy. You know, I, yes. I ran into one grouchy person in Lucia, but yes. there's always a grouch. Every every country, yeah. every country has one. Yes. Person. You, you can't you can't you can't build a great country without one horrible no. person. It's just. But the you. point the point is that you right right. I mean, the 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 point the point is. I never felt any disrespect there. In fact, I yeah. felt more respected there than I ever have in the United States, which is a problem. That's a problem all to itself. But no, I never felt any issues of stigma. And I felt that the sighted people um, who were work, who worked there, one a very an elderly woman, a nice, nice Canadian lady. Um, yes. She was always very kind, very, very, very sweet lady, always helping out. She did get a little... Um, at times, maybe from an outsider perspective, I, she told me a lot that sometimes she gets a little frustrated with mm. just in, in the Caribbean, sometimes this whole, just the, the little stuff, like the little things, like this whole concept of time. You know, she tells people to come at a certain time and they don't. And, you know, to people of North America, that's a form of, of, being, of being disrespectful. But, but, but that is throughout the entire Caribbean, the entire Caribbean, right? Um, yeah, we don't necessarily have the same concept of time. No. Now, once you, once you go to England, Britain, <laughs> and you're trained, your concept of time is different. <laughs> if you tell me seven o'clock, I am going to assume that I should be waiting on you at five to seven, right? Because I'm going to assume that if five minutes after seven and I don't show, you don't want to see me again. Right. Because I'm late. You follow? Yes, so yes. Th- that, that's the kind of concept. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but to go back to this old, whole thing of stigma, the stigma is not that they become disrespectful or afraid or anything like that, but they don't... If you offer services that the general population can participate in, some of them are a little reluctant. I haven't done a survey. I don't think anybody has done a survey. So I can't say to you that this is X percentage or Y percentage. But what I do know is that there is a level of, you know, hesitancy. Now, 
over time, this can break down. For example, in Jamaica, 